Are you ready to take a journey towards emotional maturity with the wisdom of Buddhism? In this video, we'll explore five powerful ways to cultivate emotional maturity and lead a more mindful life. Lesson 1. Take charge of yourself. Controlling yourself is the first lesson in emotional growth. It's a difficult task that needs patience, persistence, and a deep understanding of our own minds. The RAIN method, which stands for recognize, allow, investigate, and nurture, is one way to improve your emotional intelligence. First, in this practice, we recognize and accept that a feeling, like anger or sadness, is there. After that, we don't judge the feeling or try to push it away. We just let it be. The next step is to look into the emotion with openness and interest, looking into its causes, feelings, and stories. Lastly, we take care of ourselves by being kind, compassionate, and understanding to our own feelings. In addition to the RAIN practice, we can also improve our emotional intelligence by doing things that make us express and control our feelings. As an example, we can do improvisational theater or role-playing games that let us show and act out a lot of different feelings in a safe and supportive setting. We can also work on assertive communication, which means being clear, polite, and sure of what we want and need when we say it. Developing wisdom, which means getting a direct, personal understanding of how things work in the world, is another way to change bad mental states. We can make our lives and the lives of others happier, more fulfilling, and more caring by practicing mindfulness, getting better at emotional intelligence, and changing unhealthy mental states into healthy ones. Lesson 2. Let go of things and wait. Giving up things and learning to be patient which is the second lesson of emotional maturity, requires a big change in how we see and live our lives. One of the most important ideas in Buddhism is that everything changes, everything in our lives, from our things and relationships to our very selves, can change and end. Realizing this truth can be both humbling and freeing, because it helps us value each moment more and let go of our attachment to the fact that life is short. We set ourselves up for pain when we hold on to things, like things we own, wants, or hopes. Eventually, the things we care about will change or disappear, which will make us feel sad and unhappy. We can be more peaceful and happy in life, even when things go wrong. This can be done by developing an awareness of change and learning to let go. Giving up something you want is called renunciation. It is an important Buddhist practice. This may make you think of ascetic monks and nuns living very simple lives, but withdrawal can be done by anyone, no matter what their situation or way of life is. Giving up something doesn't mean rejecting or denying the world. It means letting go of our connection to it. This can mean giving up bad habits or behaviors like drinking too much or gossiping, or it can mean letting go of our connection to things like money, status, or fame. We can start to grow a greater sense of self-awareness and inner peace by letting go of these outside sources of happiness and validation. This doesn't mean we should give up our responsibilities or relationships. Instead, it means we should try to interact with them in a more thoughtful and kind way, without the chains of connection and expectation. Patience is a virtue that is often undervalued in our fast-paced, results-driven world. However, the ability to endure difficulty and adversity with a calm and open mind is important to our emotional and spiritual growth. Buddhism teaches us that patience is not merely the act of quietly enduring, but rather an active process of transformation. When we are faced with challenges or obstacles, we have the opportunity to develop patience by actively choosing to respond with wisdom and kindness, rather than reacting out of fear or anger. To cultivate patience, it is helpful to realize that our suffering often comes from our own resistance to the present moment. When we are able to fully accept and embrace our circumstances, even if they are tough or unpleasant, we can begin to find a sense of peace and clarity amidst the chaos. Also keep in mind that being patient is a process and that our natural ability to handle hard times will rise and fall. It can help to take a step back 
practice awareness or meditation, and think about the bigger picture when we are feeling stressed or angry. Not only does practicing patience make us healthier, it also makes the world a better place to live by making people more tolerant and understanding. Lesson 3. Be kind to others. Respecting others is an important part of being emotionally mature because it helps us make links that matter, keep the peace in our communities, and improve the health of all living things. Being empathetic means being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes and understand their feelings, thoughts, and experiences as if they were your own. Respect is built on recognizing that every person has worth and dignity on their own, no matter their background, views, or circumstances. Active listening means giving the person talking your full attention, not talking over them or giving them help they didn't ask for, and trying to understand their feelings and needs. Take part in a variety of activities and talks to broaden your views and make you think about what you think you know. Remember that empathy isn't about fixing or agreeing with other people. It's about making a place where everyone can understand and accept each other. The natural reaction to suffering is compassion, which is a strong desire to ease pain and improve the health of others and ourselves. In spite of our differences in race, gender, and nationality, it is what brings us together and reminds us that we are all human. To become more compassionate, you should first recognize and accept your own pain and weakness, knowing that these things are normal parts of being human. Show others the same kindness by being there for them, saying something nice or lending a hand. Remember that compassion is not feeling sorry for someone or talking down to them. Instead, it means realizing how linked we all are and reacting with love and wisdom. Do something mindful every day, like yoga, meditation or mindful walking, to become more self-aware and better able to control your emotions. This will make it easier for you to treat others with empathy, respect and loving kindness. Every day, try to do something nice for someone else, like praising a stranger, helping a neighbor or giving your time and skills to someone else. Think about the good things in your life and tell the people who have helped and inspired you how much you appreciate them. Being thankful makes us more empathetic, compassionate, and loving kind because it makes us realize how much we depend on each other and how much goodness is around us. Take part in activities, talks, and media that make you think about what you think you know and help you understand the world better. This will not only help you understand how others feel, but it will also help you appreciate the complex web of human life more. Lesson 4. Be positive and don't say bad things about other people. The fourth lesson in emotional growth is very important because it tells us to keep a positive attitude and not criticize other people. Being upbeat isn't just a nice thing to do. It's a strong force that can change our lives and the world around us. By keeping a positive attitude, we can handle life's difficulties better, stay at peace with ourselves and make our lives more fulfilling and harmonious. Buddhism teaches us that what we think and say has a big effect on the world around us. The rule of karma says that everything we do, including what we think and say, has effects that last beyond this life. People can make the world a better place for themselves and others by thinking happy thoughts and saying nice, encouraging things. It is important to see and value the good things in ourselves and others if we want to stay upbeat. When we recognize our strengths and successes, it makes us feel better about ourselves and gives us more confidence. This, in turn, makes us more optimistic. In the same way, when we praise someone's good qualities, we not only make our relationships stronger, but we also encourage them to develop those qualities even more. Another powerful way to stay upbeat is to be thankful. We can change our focus from what we don't have to what we do have by actively recognizing and expressing gratitude for the good things in our lives. This will make us happier and healthier. Right speech is speech that is honest, helpful, and said at the right time and in the right way. Buddhism teaches us the worth of this kind of speech. We can make sure that our words are not only honest, but also kind, caring, and helpful by following right speech. 
When we want to criticize someone, we need to stop and think about why we want to do it. Are we really trying to help the person? Or are we just trying to show how much better we are, get rid of our anger, or meet some other self-centered need? It is best not to speak if our intentions are not good. Instead, we should focus on thinking more loving and happy thoughts. Another option is to show others how to behave or think in the same way you want them to. By showing others how to have the traits we admire and respect, we can encourage and inspire them to do the same without having to give them direct advice or criticism. We can make our lives and the lives of those around us more peaceful, fulfilling, and enlightened by thinking and saying positive things, noticing and enjoying the good things in others and ourselves, and communicating in a way that shows empathy and doesn't judge. Lesson 5. Believe in yourself. Believing in yourself is an important part of being emotionally mature because it gives us the confidence, strength, and self-compassion to deal with life's difficulties. The belief that you can complete a job or reach a goal is called self-efficacy. It is a key psychological concept that affects our motivation, performance, and overall health. To boost your self-efficacy, think about the things you've done well in the past, look for mentors and role models who have the traits you want to have, and divide your goals into smaller, more manageable steps. Another important part of believing in yourself is being kind, understanding, and forgiving to yourself when things go wrong or things don't go as planned. Self-compassion is an inner sense of worthiness and acceptance that stays solid even when bad things happen. This is different from self-esteem, which depends on things like success, attractiveness, or social approval. Self-compassion makes people less likely to criticize themselves, dwell on problems, or act defensively, which has been shown to improve their mental health, make them more resilient, and make their relationships more satisfying. To become more self-compassionate, be kind and understanding to yourself as you would be to a close friend. Also, remind yourself that you are human and that everyone struggles and makes mistakes. Finally, practice mindfulness to become more aware of your thoughts, feelings, and experiences without judging them. Finding and changing the limited thoughts and habits that might be hurting your confidence, sense of self-worth, or ability to reach your goals is an important part of believing in yourself. These can be deeply held beliefs, often unconscious, about yourself, other people, or the world, as well as thoughts, feelings, or actions that you do over and over again that might be stopping you from being successful and happy. Building a strong network of friends, family, and teachers who support and encourage us can be very important for our growth and development. They can give us the support, feedback, and outside view we need to believe in ourselves and reach our full potential. To build and maintain your own support network, look for people who share your values, hobbies, and goals, and put in the time and effort to make connections that are deep, real, and good for both of you. Believing in yourself is a lifelong process that includes building self-efficacy, self-compassion, and the ability to change limiting beliefs and patterns. It also involves building groups and relationships that support you. You can make your life more balanced and satisfying by being mindful, accepting that things change, developing compassion, letting go of attachments, and living in the present moment. Remember that becoming emotionally mature is a process, not a goal. So be kind to yourself as you continue to grow and change.